Hi everyone, happy April. It's Bells, welcome back to my channel. Today I am just filling in my March reading journal and giving you a little mini wrap up in case you didn't wanna watch the hour long behemoth of my last reading vlog. In April, I gave myself the challenge to read only fantasy for a whole month. And while I read some incredible books, I don't think I would do such a restrictive challenge again. With fantasy in particular, there's so much world building and so many characters that I wound up feeling a little overwhelmed. I really like seeing how my TBR measures up to what I actually ended up reading, and I hit almost every book except for The Princess Bride. Also, um, if you can't tell by my scribbling out, please don't read On a Pale Horse by Piers Anthony. <laughs> now, I had been reading The Stand for three weeks, it feels like, before I finally finished it early March, and it was probably my least favorite reading experience I have ever had. The female characters were just baby machines, the structure was lazy, and for a book that markets itself as a religious commentary, it read a lot more like dark Christian fiction for me. I bounced back immediately though with Hero of Ages and finishing off the Mistborn trilogy, which was such a lovely experience. I could talk about these books all day, and I have, so all you really need to know is that if you haven't read them, you should. Like, yesterday. Nothing But Black and Teeth was a huge letdown with some of the least likable characters I have ever read, making the stakes really low and the book just kind of boring. Under the Whispering Door though was super sweet, very wholesome, and while I didn't love the ending, I thought it was a wonderful and lighthearted story that really promoted reflection on where we go after we die. I definitely recommend it, but it does touch on some pretty serious topics, so please read with care. Neon Gods was fine. <laughs> Spicy with a decent enough story that I made it to the end, although it was kind of repetitive and not something I would imagine getting as much hype as it did. Oh, Dracula, Dracula, Dracula. I really wanted to love this book, and I really did enjoy the first 150 pages or so, but it became a very tedious read full of Bram Stoker's philosophies on life rather than anything to do with the story, and as is typical of books written by men in the 1800s, definitely had some issues with female characters. It was worth the read as a horror lover, but not something I would read again. But then I bounced right back with Priory of the Orange Tree, which is probably my favorite book of the year, and it was such a unique and all-encompassing fantasy that really deserves the time you put into it. It's thoroughly fantastic. Cover Me With Apples was also fantastic, and I can't tell you anything about it in case I ruin the plot twist, but the twist is brilliant and I've been waiting for a book like this my whole life. Uh, fifth Season is a book that is not for everyone, including me, <laughs> and it ultimately read like a prequel to what I assume the rest of the trilogy is about. I will be continuing the series since I loved N.K. Jemisin's writing and how the story reflects on racism and slavery, but this first book is a real slog to get through. And I ended the month with Assassin's Apprentice, which was such a lovely light fantasy with an easy world to fall into. A very quiet, character-focused book that catered to all of my slow burn needs. It was a really interesting month of reading, and I read more in this month than I ever have in a month, but I'm going to try and expand my genres for April so I don't straight up lose my mind again. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you with my next video on Sunday.